Spurs shooting guard Marco Bellinelli is missing basketball and he continues to discuss what he's going through while being self quarantined here in the Alamo City. Wednesday on his 34th birthday, Belly talked with Italian outlet Sky Sport. He said the layoff has been tough and that he worries about being physically ready when and if the regular season picks back up. So here's what he said about staying ready. Quote, it's important to stay active every day to understand when the season restarts, but the work routine is completely broken right now. I don't have a basket to be able to train because I live in an apartment on the 15th floor. Thinking about it, I've never spent so long without shooting. End quote. In high school hoops, Brandeis senior guard Kyle Schaefer announced last week that he will be continuing his athletic and academic career at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. This season, the first team all district and first team all region selection eclipsed the 1,000 career points mark for the Broncos and averaged 15 and a half points per game. Schaefer says he hopes to make an immediate impact his freshman season with the Mountain Lions. I want to go in and definitely get a spot in the rotation, you know, get minutes my freshman year, and then uh, definitely want to do whatever I can when I, once I get there to help the team both on and off the court, you know, with GPA and, uh, and all that. And then the goal is to go in and help win a conference championship. Schaefer captain the 33 and three Brandeis team still set the play in the UIL boys 6A state semifinal against Duncanville when the state tournament was indefinitely postponed. Schaefer says that although he and his teammates were disappointed, the suspension doesn't take away from the season the team put together. Stuff in the community and our team is more important than basketball. You know, keeping each other safe and, and healthy is more important. It's just, you know, we came together and we were like, you know, hopefully we can get to play this game. And if we don't, you know, we, we all know at the, end of the, at the end of the day we had a great season. Schaefer plans on studying business management and has aspirations of playing professionally after college. This was a scene all around Major League Baseball yesterday. Empty stadiums, and this is Petco Park in San Diego, California, home to the Padres. Thursday was opening day, but the start of the season was pushed back amid the COVID-19 outbreak. All 30 teams were scheduled to play ball. The Padres were scheduled to host the Rockies, and it looks like a San Diego pitcher was playing long toss in the meantime. The reigning World Series champion Washington Nationals want to defend their crown. One of their fans was totally bummed out they're not playing ball. It's just terrible that we can't see him play as World Series champs. I mean, I wanted to be there today, <laughs> cheering him like mad. 44,000 not... people in that space. That's the whole point of going to the game, to be packed with fellow fans and to feel their emotion. But I totally respect what they've done. They had to do it. What else could they do? That's a good point. What else could they do? Baseball fans are, baseball fans are sad, but... They had no choice. Yeah, and no, I was just thinking, you said it was two weeks and two days since the NBA suspended its season. Yes. It feels like forever. Like. It does. It feels longer than that, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are watching old games just to, like, <laughs> feel like you they're too. still They sports. are indeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Spurs fans are watching all those Spurs championship runs. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not at all. All right. Thank you, Larry. Well, SA Live has an encore presentation for us today, packed with some of the best stuff you can do at home right now. From food and entertainment to crafts and handiwork, they have you covered. Yeah, here's a sneak peek at what's coming up in just a few minutes. Anything I happen to make at home right now is what I already have. That's right. Okay, so after taking some inventory, I decided <laughs> on a grilled chicken salad using mm. Fisher and Weezer raspberry chipotle sauce. Oh, do your thing. Beatrix Meat Market has some great cuts of meat. I use their skirt steak and some easy recipe ingredients that you can find at HEB to make this fajita recipe. Check it out. Log in to pick where you want to go. And it's like you're there. Being native to the state, they've been here for millennia. They've evolved over time to be adapted to our climate and to our soil types. Um, they really only occur in Texas. We've provided hand sanitizer for almost their entire police force. Shop local, shop small. I'm really big about that. My friend over there at Scratch Farms, um, she has hand sanitizer, she has soaps. You can get them online. Maybe you don't want to go out to Bernie. She has all that online. Not only can you pick up grocery items, but you can get fresh tortillas and even party packs at the bar. Now, David Elder launched a website to help you out with finding restaurants that are offering takeout, curbside, and delivery right now. It's safoodtogo.com, and you can see it right here. Dave and Curtis is going to play us out.
Singer songwriter Vanessa Carlton is one of the many artists that has turned to social media to give fans a live concert. Today marks one entire week of her performances, which is celebrating the release of her sixth album, Love is an Art. You can catch the singer on her Instagram tonight at 5. And in developing news, the House passed the $2.2 trillion stimulus package. The relief bill will send payments of up to $1,200 to millions of Americans. Help unemployment benefits, offer loans, grants, and tax breaks. You can read all about the stimulus package right now on KSAT.com. All right, a last look at your forecasting. Warm and humid today. An early shot at some showers tomorrow morning uh, means a cool front arrives, and that drops humidity this weekend. So a little cooler and definitely uh, much drier air settling in for the next couple of days. Increasing clouds late Sunday take us into Monday. A mostly cloudy day with a chance of scattered showers and non-severe storms. Hopefully we can get some good rain there and wash out some of this oak. And that's all of our show now from all of us here on KSAT. Thank you for joining us. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Well, the homeschooling has begun. So we want to know, parents, how are you getting schooled <laughs> by homeschooling? A lot of parents are. What are some of the issues you've had with teaching your kids? Let us know on Facebook and Twitter and tag us at SA Live KSAT. You might see your answer later on in the show. Answer or grievances, <laughs> either. <Yeah. laughs> Whatever it is. Well, that's not the only thing we are having to do at home. A lot of folks are cooking a lot more now. That's right. So we put together videos of our home cooking using some ingredients from around some favorite regulars that we have on the show and some restaurants around that you might have seen, you know, driving around. And anything I happen to make at home right now is what I already have. That's right. Okay, so after taking some inventory, I decided <laughs> on a grilled chicken salad using Ooh. Fisher and Weezer raspberry chipotle sauce. Oh, do your thing. So some of the easiest meals to make right now are things that you can already find in your freezer, in your fridge, and in your pantry. So what I'm making today for my family's dinner is some chicken breast tenders that I found in the freezer and have defrosted, a garden salad blend from HEB that was in my fridge, best of used by, well, it's a good thing we are using that now. Some cheese, okay, we've also got some vegetables, you know, you can be whatever you like of your choice, and some roasted raspberry chipotle sauce from Fisher & Weezer, which is a great finishing flavor for a grilled chicken. You can brush it on that or even pour it over some cream cheese, so we are gonna use that on the chicken today because I found this in my pantry. To finish off the salad, we are going to use some balsamic vinegar and olive oil with some salt and pepper. We've got the Fisher & Weezer roasted raspberry chipotle sauce finishing flavor, and we've grilled the chicken. We've added that onto it so it can soak up and give it that extra yum yum. So while the chicken's on the grill, we can go ahead and get started with our vegetables. We want to make sure they are washed, clean, and ready to go. And then you want to go ahead and chop them up in salad-sized portions. All right, so for the dressing, it's going to be a honey balsamic vinaigrette. So you're going to need two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, fourth cup light olive oil, one thing I forgot to mention that you do need for this recipe is some honey. One to two tablespoons of honey. We've got our beautiful grilled chicken. We're gonna throw that in there into the bowl. We've got our bell peppers and onions. We add the salad and some shredded cheddar cheese. And then you're just going to go ahead and toss it up. And there is the finished product. We went ahead and drizzled some of the honey balsamic vinaigrette dressing on it. So enjoy. Mm. Oh, that is so good. That Fisher and Weezer raspberry chipotle sauce. That takes it to next level. Mm. Oh, I just want to finish this right now. 
Fiona, that looked absolutely delicious. I'm telling you, the sauce with the Fisher and Weezer raspberry, you know, like Chipotle yeah. with that glazed on the chicken. Oh, next level. So good. All right, so I wanted to make some fajitas, but real quick, I want to explain why I'm wearing this shirt right now. Turn around, get a shot of this. I'm wearing a shirt from a local restaurant. This is a food truck called Icarico, and they're inside of the Munch Madness food truck competition that we have going on right now. But I'll be wearing uh, different shirts that I want to support local restaurants. They're my friends. Some of them are family. I want to do everything I can to make sure that we're supporting them the best we can. This is a great way to do it. Um, so, you know, support local, you guys. And speaking of supporting local, Beatrix Meat Market has some great cuts of meat. I use their skirt steak and some easy recipe ingredients that you can find at HEB to make this fajita recipe. Check it out. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get your meat. It's been marinating for a couple hours now. You got a little bit of oil in there. You got your seasoning. Your grill is nice and hot, right? You got some bell peppers, some onions. I got my beer, because you got to grill with some beer, right? I have some tortillas right here that we're going to put onto the grill as well. We're going to start with the meat. Meat's going to take the longest. So what you're going to want to do, get your marinated meat. Make sure your grill's at a good, solid grilling temperature, about 500 degrees. You want to hear that sizzle. Typically, you want the meat that you're going to be serving up your fajitas to be uh, like a medium, medium well. You don't want them to be overcooked, because by the time you take it off the grill, the meat's going to keep cooking, right? So I shoot for about a medium. So that means rotating every couple minutes. Let the meat sit on there for about like five minutes kind of judge where it's at. You want to turn it 45 degrees, right? So you just want to shift it. So really what I like to do is put it on in like in a, if it's straight, that's okay. But if you put it on at an angle, just switch the angle. And you don't want to overcook it. That's the secret. For this next part of grilling, you're gonna need some bell peppers, some white onion, some Goya adobo all-purpose seasoning, that's my favorite, and some extra virgin light tasting olive oil, works best, and some tortillas to get ready to cook. Let our cast iron heat up. I'm gonna get some of the olive oil right here. We're gonna pour it right into the cast iron pan. Just a little bit on the bottom. A little more. I like to season the pan, so we're gonna get our Goya adobo all-purpose seasoning right in the bottom, just load it up. Here we go. We flip the meat right there. Rock solid, ready to go. Check this out. Woo that looks delicious. You want to get your bowl of onions and bell pepper. We got some red and yellow and orange bell pepper right here, some white onions straight into the pan, okay? And then to bring all those flavors up from the pan, get your beer. See that? These are ready to rock and roll. We're gonna take these off, put them in my tortilla holder. You're gonna get your steak. You want it to rest for a couple minutes when you take it off, but then it's ready to rock and roll. Check this out, let's do this. Put on some veggies. Check it out, y'all. Two tacos, ready to rock. We got a lot more for the family right here. You guys, and to get this recipe, of course, head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Here we go. I can taste that Yum. right now. Oh, it's yes. so good. <laughs> That's all right. Well, while we were cooking and grilling at home, your grill looked clean. It's very clean. But apparently, Mike Osterhage's grill wasn't. So <laughs> he figured out how to clean his grill at home using only chopsticks. This is... <laughs> cha -cha -cha. He's doing well, and as always, he's figuring out new handyman tricks like he always... We know he would have had this much time at home. So let's see how he did it. So the other night we had sandwiches for dinner and I used our sandwich press and it's got all these you know, grooves in there to put some grill marks on the sandwich. However, when it comes time to cleaning this, that can be a little bit tough. You get the cheese maybe running in there and those little grooves. You can use a, a scouring pad or a sponge or something like that, but you really can't get into the corners. Well, what I do, I save chopsticks. Every Chinese takeout. 
and chopsticks and a lot of them. This is a great tool to use. It is wood, so it's like any other wooden utensil with nonstick surfaces. And it fits just perfectly in all these little grooves. And you can put some warm soaking water in there and let it soak maybe and get all the stuff out of there. Maybe the dripped cheese, dried or burned cheese and everything. Now, if the end of this gets a little messy, you don't have to throw the whole chopstick away. You can actually take some wire cutters or even just kind of score it lightly with a knife and just clip that end off and you've got another chopstick. Now, another use for chopsticks, have you ever replaced the hinges, for instance, on kitchen cabinets and the holes don't quite line up? Now, this is a barrel bowl, but you get the idea. You know, sometimes it's off just a little bit and notice how that one is just a little out of kilter and if you line it up, of course, the hinge, the bolt would be crooked. Well, there's no way I can drill out right next to that to drill a pilot hole because it would just kind of wander into that other hole. If I put the screw in there, it would pull it off center. So what you can do, if the hole is small enough, you can always take a couple of toothpicks, stick them in there with a little bit of glue. But if it's a little bit bigger, take a drill bit about the same size as the chopstick, drill out that hole a bit larger, and take a little end of the chopstick, put just a little dab of glue on there, and put it right in, and the end of that, what you can do is take a hammer or even your pliers, down in there, wait for the glue to dry, and that's gonna be just about good as new. So then once it sand it off or trim off any excess, and then once that is dried, that piece of wood is basically good as new, and then you can put a new pilot hole in there and a new screw, and your hinge, barrel bolt, whatever it may be, is gonna work perfectly, and it's going into pretty much new wood. So, save the chopsticks. Who did this? <laughs> I know. Save the chopsticks, y'all. There's a lot of things you can do with them. Yeah, there is. There you is. Know? I had just had no idea he was going to clean a panini grill. <laughs> he said panini grill, y'all. Let me tell you, I, we don't I have thought, we don't have Mike with us right now. But he said grill. That's himself. a panini He'll press. He'll explain himself tomorrow. Yeah, it'll work out. <laughs> <laughs> Next on SA Live, stay active with these activities that you can find online. There are a ton of virtual things that you can do in places that you can check out to keep the whole family engaged. Keep it here. Welcome back to SA Live. Right now, we know everything has gone virtual from ordering food to taking out food and working out classes, everything, everything. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got a list of ideas you can take part in, including helping out some local nonprofits who are dear to our show. That's right, and we found some fun virtual tours that you may want to try out since there are no field trips required, no vacations happening right now. Our Jen Tobias Dresky put this list together for you at home. Check it out. Supporting nonprofits or finding virtual things to do. We have you covered today. So many nonprofits are struggling right now. So, how can you help? Keep in mind that Zoomagination is a mobile zoo. They are unable to bring animals to people and businesses right now. Today at 3 o'clock, go on their Facebook page and they will host a Facebook Live with some of their animals. And you can interact and ask questions as well. They'll also talk about how you can donate and help them during this critical time. The San Antonio Zoo is asking for your help as well. Their animal care staff are working to ensure the animals are getting the care they need right now while the zoo is closed. They have an emergency fund where they are able to accept donations online. You can go to their website and just click to donate the amount you'd like to give. This will help keep operations running smoothly right now while they remain closed. The Wounded Warriors Project is adapting and offering virtual resources. 
If you head to their website, they have apps to help reduce stress during this time, live chats for veterans, active duty military and their families. Of course, they are also available via telephone to answer questions or concerns right now. Spinal Bifida Texas had to cancel their Fashion Able Fashion Show this month. You can still help out the nonprofit. They are in need of adult diaper donations. They're also giving what they do have to those in need. Here are some virtual fun things to try right now. Disney World is allowing you to take a virtual ride on their roller coasters. You can gather the kids and all join in for this fun experience. How about exploring the Great Wall of China? You can do that too, without leaving your house, of course. This wonder of the world is a good place to virtually visit, but also to educate the kids. The Smithsonian Natural Museum of Natural History is also offering virtual tours right now. Log in to pick where you want to go, and it's like you're there. The website offers an interactive map to guide you through the tour. Why are Texans so obsessed with blue bonnets? I think it's one of the few things that you can see in mass where you're, you know, when you see them sometimes they can just be acres of solid blue. Other wildflowers will do that also, but I think the blue color is also very appealing because there just aren't that many flowers that are that color blue. And of course, they're the state flower of Texas, so there's a lot of state pride that's part of all that. Being native to the state, they've been here for millennia. They've evolved over time to be adapted to our climate and to our soil types. Um, they really only occur in Texas for the most part, and uh, I think that makes them special also. So the best time of year to see Texas wildflowers would be for blue bonnets early, I would say, in March. For a wider diversity, I would say April and May, and a lot of it is really going to depend on the weather. If we have good rains through the winter, that generally makes a good wildflower season the following spring, as long as we don't get too much rain. So too dry or too wet can be a problem. The seedlings start to germinate in the fall, so the ones that are blooming right now actually germinated the previous probably October, give or take a month or two. They grow as rosettes close to the ground for the rest of the winter and then as soon as it starts to warm up in the spring they start to elongate and make their lovely beautiful blue flowers that we all admire. And you can plant plants, actual plants, in a pot this time of year but if you want a big field of them I would suggest planting the seed in the fall. So if people want to get pictures taken with blue bonnets with their family People often go to the roadside, which, you know, I'd be very cautious about doing that, especially if you're taking little kids or pets because you don't want to have, you know, an accident with traffic. Other places that you could go would be some of the parks, you know, uh, McKinney Ruff State Park, Enchanted Rock, or some local park would be a great place to get blue bonnet pictures. South by Southwest was canceled. The team, we were kind of trying to figure out what was gonna be happening at Desert Door for the next few months. And so we kind of just turned our attention to figuring out like how might we go about helping during this time. Um, so we started thinking of different ways and hand sanitizer jumped to first of mind when you saw the, you know, the run on the product and the shortage that was happening out there. Well, we believe that this was an opportunity to actually be a good community partner. This is our civic responsibility, and this was our way to actually provide some relief, some comfort to those first responders, those people that are out there on the front lines and that don't have the luxury of self-quarantining. So we were first approached uh, early on by San Antonio Police Department, um, then Corpus Christi Police Department, Austin Police Department, Houston, and now we're up to well over a dozen um, police departments where we have provided hand sanitizer for almost their entire police force. Not to mention the FBI as well, uh, Texas Parks and wildlife, a couple of local hospitals, the city of uh, Austin, we've provided 110 gallons of hand sanitizer to. Um, the good, great thing is, is we set out to do about 750 gallons this week and provide it out and we did all that. So we've been doing all this completely free of charge. Uh, we are accepting donations through our GoFundMe page, uh, which you know greatly appreciated. But our goal is to you know get this out to first responders right away. You know the procurement process with the government, even in a time of emergency, can be quite uh, laborious and tiresome. Um, it's really um, refreshing. You can hear for the person on the other side when they call us up and we tell them we're just giving this out free of charge, and all they have to do is come pick it up. 
uh, how much easier that makes their life and their job. So when we first decided to do this, we wanted to make sure that we were doing it right, that we weren't just making uh, you know, hand sanitizer that wasn't actually performing the function that it needed to, which is kill the, the virus itself. We researched it online, we found a World Health Organization uh, recipe on how to make this, and uh, the FDA had stood behind that recipe and provided that as well. So the World Health Organization designates that you do it up to 80% alcohol. In addition, most Americans are used to a gel type hand sanitizer. This is actually a liquid. So normally when we make our alcohol here at Desert Door, um, for a bottle of our original, it's served at 40% um, alcohol or 80 proof. Um, but when we make this hand sanitizer, it's gotta be at 80% alcohol or 160 proof. So we've had to alter our process here in order to take this up to a much higher like level of purity. Um, so we actually take it up now to 190 proof, which is essentially pure alcohol in a distillery like this. And then we mix it with hydrogen peroxide with some glycerin, it acts as a moisturizer for the skin so people can use it throughout the course of the day. We're a producer of an ultra premium spirit called Desert Door Texas Sotol, and it's made from a plant that grows wild out in West Texas. What I mean by wild is we don't plant it, water it, or fertilize it, we just go out and find it. The first uniquely Texas spirit, it's got a 10,000 year history, the plant does, is a plant of sustenance for people who've lived and survived in West Texas. And for us, we just aim to tell that story and to share this product with the world. We intend to keep this hand sanitizer program going. You know, whether that's just me and my co-founders coming in and making bulk orders and providing it to first responders, the need is so large. So until the big dogs kind of get into the fight on this and start, you know, providing millions and millions of bottles of hand sanitizer, we're gonna work to help um, supply our local first responders and healthcare professionals. of course are getting a lot of bonus time at home with all the kids, yes. but how do you keep busy? Adina Anderson, our lifestyle expert, is here to show us some fun activities for you and the kids to do at home. Yes, well the first thing of course is the hand sanitizer. Yes, okay. It includes glitter, so glitter's fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the main ingredient in this is the alcohol. That's what's killing you know, the germs, that's what's taking care of it. The gel, the aloe vera gel, is just so your hands don't dry out because and the yeah, alcohol gel, will dry out your hands. You probably already have at I have this in my mm -hmm. pantry, in, or what I get, my linen closet in my bathroom, and you want to make sure you do three parts alcohol, one part aloe vera. Okay. And you got to make sure the alcohol is a strong enough isopropyl yes, alcohol. Yes, you do, you do. And um, you, know, you could go online, I know a lot of places are out, but they're starting to get things in, so you can certainly find more of that. Add some glitter, make it fun, the kids will like to do that. And these little containers, I, I think I got them at Target, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. You may have a container around the house, that you can do that and while she's doing that okay you're gonna do that. so why not give the kids something educational to do right all right <laughs> so we can do something some yeah had, I mean Lowe's and things like that are still open they're very big locations so you're mm -hmm. fine there and get yourself some plants or you could even do seeds with some soil so the kids have time to watch it grow I used to love doing that when I, was I know Plant, like carrots and stuff, watch them grow, or, or exactly. strawberries. Then you can feed the family with it, right? <laughs> exactly. And so this is just the acrylic paint, the deco art acrylic paint. I love it. It goes on these clay pots perfectly. Pop the plan in, you're good to go. And then this one that I have, that Fiona is going to start crafting with. How are you doing over there? I'm, I'm, almost, I'm trying to get <laughs> the aloe vera out. Oh no, did it twist? <laughs> I, I tried twisting it. It seems to be stuck, so I'm going to go a different route here. Now, now, of course, you may have to do something with the little root ball here. Because yeah, because the or get a bigger pot. These are yeah. things I had around my house, okay. so you could certainly mess with that. And you know, I have these little wood squares that we did the checkerboard with, but you could do this on cardboard. I mean, they can paint on anything that they have around the house. How you doing over there? <laughs> Come on, hello, <laughs> it's, so it's making me work more. <laughs> How to keep Fiona busy oh, when she's got it. I got yes. It. <laughs> I got it. Woo. Yay! Right. And another thing that she has on the table over there, you know, shop local, shop small. I'm really big about that. My friend over there at Scratch Farms, um, she has hand sanitizer, she has soaps. You can get them online. Maybe you don't want to go out to Bernie. She has all that online. Or you can get this online. Thieves has some hand sanitizer. This is um, Young Living. The, mm -hmm. A lot of people know them for oils, things like that. But you could certainly do um, get that online and they ship it to you. So you don't have to go out and get it. And by mixing the alcohol with the, the aloe, not only does it make it a little bit thicker but yes. it also kind of helps out with the drying effect of the it alcohol. really does yeah okay. because it, it can dry out your hands I mean I wash my hands prior 
prior to this, like right. 50 times a day, I've got dogs. And this <laughs> is such a good way to just kind of teach kids about hand sanitizer. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and it makes them want to use it because they created it. That's the big part. Right, there's so that. Board games are going to yes. be really popular. Yeah, so the parents are doing the drinking, right? So we have all these. <laughs> <laughs> you could use Pop Tots too if you want or whatever. <laughs> but these are just boards. Like I said, you could use cardboard if you want. Maybe you don't want to run out and get wood and you have paint around the house. I just use the acrylic paint here. And I measured. I'm not usually the measuring girl, but this is an eight by eight. So each square is an inch by an inch. I mean, uh -huh. it's that simple. And I already got them measured out for you. And then just let the kids paint it. I will tell you, it took me about an hour to do this. So that will keep them busy for a really long time. <laughs> and nothing is more fun than playing a game of checkers. Yes. Even if it is with beer bottle tops. Exactly, yes. <laughs> well, these are obviously some fantastic ideas, and they will keep the kids, keep the, the lungs busy as well. And you've got just a million of them on yes. your website. And for more information, Creative Lifestyles with Adina, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Listen up because we're about to show you a way you can get fit alongside your kids. That's right. Trainer and owner Brandy Garcia from the Pit Gym is here and you are going to show us three workouts that you can do alongside your kids, right? Correct. So at home workouts that we can do alongside our kids, one of them is an obstacle course. Mm -hmm. um, they love to engage and have fun. So this is one way to get them to kind of battle themselves and challenge themselves along with challenging you. All right. So the first thing you do is you got to find some markers, some markers. right? Yep. You're going to set up four markers around either the grass area, your driveway, um, if you have a safe street on the street um, and what you do after you get those four markers is you're gonna assign an exercise to each marker so what they're gonna do is they're gonna take off from one marker to the other do the exercise they'll slide over to the next marker do the exercise that's required there backpedal to another one do that exercise and they'll repeat it all the way around so they just make their way around the making square. their way around their square yeah. all right and who do we have helping us out helping us out today this is Azariah Delgado and this is Santanis Delgado all right okay let's get started tell us what we're doing at each one okay so we're gonna start at cone number one cone number one you will do five jumping jacks after your five jumping jacks you will lateral slide over to this cone you will do five squats okay after we get those five squats we're gonna run to the next cone we're gonna do five sit-ups okay after those five sit-ups you're gonna run to the next cone and we're gonna do five burpees all right guys so our first one is jumping jacks jumping jacks is a great cardiovascular endurance exercise for these kids they're gonna do five of them once they get five they're gonna lateral slide over they got squats we do squats for the reason being is we get those little legs working. As soon as they get five squats, they're gonna take off. Now we're gonna hit the floor. They're gonna do five sit-ups. So one, two, three, four, and five. Good for their little abs. As soon as they get done with that, they'll come here. And this is everybody's favorite. We're gonna do burpees. All the way up, all the way down. Because they're little kids, you don't really gotta get to that full push-up position. As long as they get a little jump up, extend that body, then they're gonna back pedal and they will repeat. This little obstacle course is a good total body workout for these kids. Gets the vascular endurance up, as well as building some muscle on their legs, core, and upper body. Okay, this is workout number two that you can do alongside your kids, right? Yes, correct. This is a buddy system workout. Um, a lot of kids like to work out with their parents. So this gives them something to do and you can do with them as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a ball slam. As she slams the ball to me, she's gonna go into a squat jump. That gives the kids something to do while they don't have the ball in their hand. Keep them engaged all the way through. This one is a total body workout. Getting their legs engaged, getting their little fast twitch muscle fibers to work. We should be doing at least 10 each. Okay, this is workout number three you can do with your kids, and it's a fun little relay race, right? But with a twist. So, basically we're gonna have the kids put these on their feet. They're furniture movers, you can buy these anywhere around the stores. You don't need to get any really specific with it. Yeah. On this one, they'll pretty much go up and back maybe about 20 feet. It's a, it's a difficult movement for them. Um, yeah. It engages the whole body, and it's Or fun. until their parent collapses. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun little relay for them to do. Like, get a couple laughs out of it while, while exercising. Yeah, so until mom or dad just goes <laughs> And as we go, all they're gonna do is we're gonna pull our bodies all the way to the line and back. Ready? Go. Come on, you guys, go. Go. All 
All right, so those are three workouts that you can do with your kids at home. Brandy Garcia, trainer and owner at Pitt Gym. Tell folks how to find you. You can find us on social media at b.pit.texas. That will be our Instagram page. All right, and for all that information, just head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, for those of you who need groceries but can't get into the grocery store, Mi Tierra has created the thing for you. The Landmark Restaurant is hosting a pop-up grocery stop at their downtown location in Historic Market Square. They started offering the service out of the Mi Tierra parking lot, and now they've moved the operation indoors. Mi Mercado de Mi Tierra is open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., but they have special hours for healthcare workers and first responders. They get to do their pickups from 8 to 10 a.m., before they open to the public. You can either shop in store or online. For in store, just go in through the main entrance and a personal shopper will help you push the cart, load the items and load them into your car. This way, nothing is touched by other customers and they remain sanitized. For curbside, just go to lafamiliacortez.com slash shop and place your order there. You can select your own pickup time and when you're ready to grab the items. Just pull up at the San Saba entrance. Our photographer, Ted, made the trip earlier today. Not only can you pick up grocery items, but you can get fresh tortillas and even party packs at the bar. Hey now. <laughs> Hey guys, it's David Elder. I'm at home right now and I want to share with you guys a couple food trucks that are still operating and they need our help now more than ever because right now restaurants are offering delivery curbside and to go and the same with food trucks and some of these food trucks were in a recent competition that we had online for Munch Madness. You guys got to check them out. The first one that we have right here for you is Carnitas Don Raul. Carnitas Don Raul Food Truck is San Antonio's newest stop for authentic Michoacan style carnitas. The family who owns the food truck also has a restaurant in Michoacan, Mexico that was featured in a Netflix taco documentary. And for good reason. All of their food is fresh and packed with flavor, like their tacos stuffed with assorted cuts of carnitas. They're making all kinds of delicious food out here. And they're also making their own salsas in-house. And they also have some pickled jalapenos and some carrots as well. I'm gonna throw this all together. We're gonna see if we get going here. I'm gonna put that green salsa on that on that lengua right there. So that's the bite right there. Ooh, look, it's dripping, it's juicy. Ooh. That is absolutely phenomenal. Another great food truck in San Antonio that you can get pickup from right now is El Remedio Food Truck. El Remedio is a food truck in San Antonio making incredible Mexican street food. I come at least uh, once a week, not gonna lie, because they be on more box. This is my first time trying this shrimp taco and I'd have to say I'm gonna put it on the to-go menu. <laughs> That's gonna be my go-to. Their popular item on the menu, birria and carnitas quesi tacos. and beef media are decades old recipes that get cooked low and slow and served hot. The Casey tacos get slathered with a rich mole sauce, a secret recipe they wouldn't share with me, and a mound of cheese and your choice of meat. They get sizzling on the flat top and seared to perfection. They also make huge quesadillas and keto tacos with a tortilla made from cheese. To get more information on all of these food trucks, just follow me on social media at Elder Eats on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I have the different stories that are on there as well as other restaurants and food trucks that are also offering delivery and curbside at this time. Keep eating San Antonio and for SA Live, I'm David Elder. Now, David Elder launched a website to help you out with finding restaurants that are offering takeout, curbside, and delivery right now. It's safoodtogo.com, and you can see it right here, and this is how it works. All you do is think about what you're looking for. Let's think. Something totally random. Burgers. Let's go with burgers. That's amazing. <laughs> no, thank you, Diana, for typing that in. Then you pick your location. In the drop-down menu, you find what you're looking for. You just hit search, and there you go. All right. 
welcome back to SA Live. We asked you earlier, what are some weird food combinations that you're putting together? And John says, hey, my friends, I like to use Irish butter instead of oil for eggs, toast, and even on pork steaks when cooking them. That sounds normal. I like that. <laughs> you were thinking about Mike's thing earlier. Yeah. Vicki says, I have made homemade stir-fried chicken and broccoli with orange sauce and sweet and sour sauce. Vicki. I know, Vicki. Hey, life right her house. here's a life hack. Get it from McDonald's. You get the packs right there. Right there you go. All right, Manuel says, not new, but it's an old school fave. Weenie flautas, crispy hot dogs, corn tortilla wrapped weenie with cheese. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, Dave and Curtis is going to play us out with a song off of his album, Texas and You. Girl, my heart belongs.